Scientists made an incredible discovery in eastern Siberia back in 2020. Deep in the wilderness, where the Badyarika River cuts through permanently frozen ground, they found something that would completely change our understanding of prehistoric predators. It was a baby saber-toothed cat, perfectly preserved in ice for 32,000 years, giving us our first real look at what these legendary hunters actually looked like in the flesh. So, in today's video, we will explore everything you need to know about the baby saber-toothed cat by breaking down all about this amazing discovery, what the scientists found, why it's so important, and what it tells us about these incredible creatures that once roamed our planet. But before we go any further, make sure to like and subscribe as a way to support our channel. With that said, let's keep things moving. The discovery site, now known as Badyarichsko, was already famous among researchers for its abundance of Ice Age animal remains. When scientists analyzed the cub's fur using advanced dating techniques, they found it lived almost 32,000 years ago, give or take a few hundred years. Using more precise dating methods, they narrowed down the time of death to between 35,471 and 37,019 years ago, right in the middle of Earth's last great ice age. What made this find so special was how well preserved the cub was. The scientists found the head and front part of the body intact all the way to the chest, along with hip bones, still connected to the leg bones. For researchers studying ancient predators, this kind of preservation is like striking gold. Now, let's talk about what this ancient cub actually looked like. This little one, which scientists identified as a Homotherium latidens, was just three weeks old when it died. Basically a tiny baby, only about 14 inches long. But here's where it gets really interesting. Even as a baby, it looked quite different from any cat you'd see today. The cub had dark brown fur that's surprisingly still soft and thick after being frozen for so long. The fur was about an inch long, with longer fur on its back and neck compared to its legs. You can still see where it had whiskers and two neat rows on its upper lip, though they're mostly broken off now. Interestingly, it had these unusual pale tufts of hair, growing from the corners of its mouth. Scientists think this might mean the adults had something like a beard, something we never knew about before, because you can't tell that from just looking at bones. To put its size in perspective, let's compare it to modern lion cubs. From nose to chest, our ancient baby measured about 9.8 inches. That's 248 millimeters for the scientists out there. A three-week-old lion cub today would be about 10.7 inches in the same measurement, growing to about 14 inches total length. Interestingly, this ancient cub's head was actually bigger than a modern lion cub's, about 4.3 inches compared to 3.6 inches. Pretty fascinating how different it was, right? Let's talk about this ancient cub's skull, because it's pretty different from what we see in modern lions. For starters, it had a bigger head, about 10% larger than baby lions today. While modern lion cubs have skull lengths between 86.5 and 92.3 millimeters, this little guy's skull measured 102.2 millimeters. That's quite a difference. The nose area of the skull was quite unique too. Unlike modern lion cubs that have a U-shaped connection between their nasal and forehead bones, this cub had a straight line connecting these bones. Its nose bones were also shorter and wider than what we see in modern lions. Here's something really interesting. There's this important opening in the skull that carries nerves and blood vessels. Scientists call it the infraorbital foramen. In our ancient cub, this opening was shaped like a slit and sat at a 30 degree angle while in modern lion cubs, it's round. It's like comparing a slash mark to a dot. The cheekbones were set wider apart than what we see in today's cats. Though fascinatingly, this feature became less obvious as these cats grew up. But perhaps the most striking difference was in the brain case. That's the part of the skull that houses the brain. It was notably larger and more swollen than what we see in modern lion cubs, measuring 70.5 millimeters across, compared to just 41.6 millimeters in modern lions. That's nearly twice the size. This tells us these ancient cats might have had some pretty different capabilities from the big cats we know today. We won't leave out the cub's teeth because they tell us an incredible story about both its age and species. Even as a baby, its teeth were already showing some amazing adaptations. At this stage, only its baby incisors, those are the front teeth, had come through the gums 
and they got progressively bigger from front to back. What's really interesting is that each of these incisors had two extra points. One large point at the back and a smaller one at the front. Now, let me break down these measurements in a way that makes sense. The front teeth started small, about the size of a grain of rice, but got bigger toward the back of the mouth. The upper teeth were particularly impressive. The front ones were about 3.7 millimeters long, but by the time you got to the back ones, they were almost twice that size. The biggest tooth up there was actually one of the premolars, measuring a whopping 13.2 millimeters long. The lower teeth followed a similar pattern, starting small and getting bigger toward the back. The most impressive tooth down there was the last premolar, measuring almost 16 millimeters long. That's about the width of your fingernail. These measurements might seem small, but remember, this was just a baby. The sophisticated arrangement of these teeth tells us that even at three weeks old, this cub was developing the dental equipment it would need to become a formidable predator. Pretty amazing how nature designed these creatures, isn't it? Now let's move to something really stunning, the front legs and paws of this ancient cub. The preservation is incredible, giving us an unprecedented look at how these predators were built to move around. The left arm was preserved right down to the bone above the elbow, with the forearm bone measuring about 94.4 millimeters long. The complete right front leg, measured from elbow to claw tip, stretched about 154.8 millimeters. The upper arm bone was notably bigger than what we see in modern lion cubs, measuring 75.6 millimeters compared to their 64.3 millimeters. But it's the paws that tell us the most amazing story about how these cats adapted to life in the Ice Age. The left front paw was about 62.5 millimeters long and pretty wide too, about 51 millimeters without the thumb or 57.3 millimeters with it. Unlike modern cats that have oval-shaped pads on their feet, this ancient cub had something completely different. The outer toes had triangle-shaped pads, while the middle toes had almost square-shaped pads. The main pad in the middle of the paw was huge compared to modern lion cubs, about twice the size. To put this in perspective, while a modern lion cub's main pad measures about 15 by 20 millimeters, our ancient friend's pad was a whopping 29 by 40 millimeters. Each toe pad was precisely sized too, getting slightly larger toward the middle of the paw. These unique features tell us that these cats were specially adapted for walking in snow and harsh conditions, quite different from the cats we know today. So why is this tiny cub such a huge deal for science? This discovery completely changes what we thought we knew about these ancient cats. Before this, scientists believed these saber-toothed cats had disappeared from Eurasia during the Middle Pleistocene. The only evidence we had of them surviving later was a single jawbone found in the North Sea, dated to about 28,000 years ago. When scientists analyzed the DNA from that jawbone, they found something incredible. These cats were actually the same species as those found in North America. Now, finding this perfectly preserved cub in Siberia blows the doors wide open on our understanding of these amazing predators. For the first time, we can see what they actually looked like with their skin, fur, and soft tissues intact. And boy, did we learn some surprising things. Remember all those drawings in movies showing saber-toothed cats with their big fangs always sticking out? Turns out that's probably wrong. The cub's deep upper lips suggest these cats could actually hide their impressive fangs when their mouths were closed, just like modern cats do with their teeth. And here's another cool discovery. Those unique square-shaped paw pads and missing wrist pad tell us these cats were much better adapted to life in the Arctic than we ever imagined. But perhaps one of the most intriguing findings comes from some ridges in the cub's skull. These same features are found in adult saber-toothed cats, but not in modern big cats, giving us new clues about how these amazing predators evolved. Here's something both exciting and sobering to think about. As our planet warms up, and the Siberian permafrost continues to thaw, we're likely to find more incredible Ice Age specimens like this cub. While these discoveries are absolutely fantastic for science, they're also sending us a pretty clear message about climate change. The Badyarika site has already given us numerous Ice Age treasures, including mammoth remains, and scientists believe there's plenty more waiting to be found. This little cub has completely changed what we thought we knew about these ancient cats. 
finding it in late Pleistocene Siberia, shows us that these predators were real survivors. Much tougher and more adaptable than we gave them credit for. Just imagine these cats thriving in the extreme Arctic environment, sharing the landscape with early humans and other Ice Age giants. What makes this discovery truly special is that we're not just looking at bones anymore. For the first time, we can see the actual soft tissues, fur, and features of these prehistoric predators. Every new detail we uncover helps transform these animals from simple skeletal drawings into real living creatures that once roamed our planet. Let's compare our little Siberian cub to other saber-toothed cat specimens found around the world. When scientists looked at its baby teeth, they found something really interesting. They were remarkably similar to specimens found in places like Spain, Italy, and Germany, and even matched up with findings from North America. There were some small differences, though. The European cats had more compact back teeth, while our Siberian friend had slightly longer ones. Scientists didn't want to damage this precious specimen, so they turned to some pretty impressive tools. They started with a high-tech CT scan at a veterinary hospital in Moscow. But that was just the beginning. They used sophisticated 3D modeling software to examine every detail of the cub without ever having to physically touch it. To really understand what they were looking at, the research team compared the cub to modern lion cubs from the Moscow Zoo's museum collection. This wasn't always easy, though. Parts of the skull had been squished a bit during fossilization. To work around this problem, they got creative. They measured the undamaged right side of the skull and doubled those measurements to figure out what the whole skull would have looked like. The scientists are still studying this amazing specimen, and every new detail they uncover helps us better understand not just these fascinating prehistoric cats, but also how life on Earth adapts to challenging conditions. Pretty amazing how a single frozen cub can tell us so much about our planet's past, isn't it? Share your thoughts, questions, or even your own ideas in the comments below. Your feedback helps us understand what topics you care about and builds a community of curious people who want to learn more about our past. But don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos about human evolution and prehistory. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and stay curious about our amazing human story.